What up? It's your boy Doughboy. Come on stage. That ain't what we're here to talk about. We're mm -hmm. here to talk about pay it forward taxes. Don't be like me. Don't be having to pay a bunch of taxes because you didn't do it. You don't want that ratchet. You want your taxes to be righteous. Yes. They do everything online. You don't have to go into any office. And if you use a special code RR, R and R, then you can get fifty dollars off. Just use RR. RR to six two three two zero eight four four two two. Once again, that's RR. RR to six two three two zero eight four four two two. Get your taxes righteous and pay it forward taxes.com get your weekly dose of r and r hey. So here's the unpopular opinion that I I haven't fully committed to yet. Okay. But it's there's almost an argument. The current state of R and B. Say it, Kev. Is as close to '90s R and B it, as we've ever gotten. Really? Uh, there is, yeah. I want to say there's just no. as much good R and B coming out as there was in the '90s. Not I better. Is disgusted. I just feel like people have been saying R&B is trash for a long time. Yeah, because 90s was like the golden era. It was the golden era, and it's still my favorite. But the current, the last maybe five years of R&B. You know why I would disagree? Where's the good group set? There's no, I don't think, but that's a different. I don't think it's group based. Okay. I'll give you that. But I don't I think just so because there's no groups, groups doesn't mean the music is bad. I feel like bad. there's some women killing. Are there really men Bruh. killing it right now? Bryce women and Taylor? Women Absolutely. Are I think it also depends on what you consider to be R&B. Right. Yeah. Because then there's there's R and B back in the day was mainstream. Like you heard it on the radio. That's true. Like voice yeah. to men. Yes. Now they don't. The only R and B now, we get is blue eyed soul R and B. But mm. I it's not. True. It's not. Because that's you. like Khalid. I agree yeah. with you. But that's what I was gonna say. We aren't looking to the radio to tell us what to listen to as much true. anymore. True. I think we're looking like playlists. Josh puts him mm -hmm. out a lot of music, yeah. and I consume just as much music as I did back then. Mm -hmm. I'm just not looking to the radio to put me on. It's my friends. It's Spotify playlists. But you're right. Boys to Men was on the radio. Their music videos were on MTV, on BT, stuff like that. Also, you knew who was singing when they were on the radio, and everybody sounds alike now. Facts. Do you think so? Facts. I, I would absolutely agree with no, that. I don't. I don't I be. Who really has a distinguishable voice out right okay, now? Okay, so I'll. Do you consider Anderson Pack R and B? Oh, I think he's like. I feel like a fusion he's of kind of like a soul funky. Yeah, he's, and he has hip hop vibes. I too. think he's a hi he's hip hop. Okay, because I was gonna say Anderson Pack. He's kind of making R and B. Okay, so Anderson Pack sounds different from PJ. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. I'm gonna trade really lightly with this conversation because oh, you're an R and B artist. <laughs> PJ when sounds different my, from say Snow Allegra. BJ, B, BJ, I definitely PJ just, has his own sound for yeah. sure. PJ, no, I was gonna say BJ. Yeah, yeah, BJ, oh, BJ too. BJ, BJ is in is in he's right. been doing this for like consistently yeah. for years. BJ is another great example. He might not get radio play, but yeah. the streets is rocking with BJ. Every time he has a show, it sells out. And he's a great guy. People yeah, forget that amazing. people he, forget that BJ was on the uh, studio with uh, Schoolboy. Yeah, really? That's that's yeah. him on the hook. Um, what is it? The uh, I'm just sitting in the studio, studio trying to get to you. That's BJ. Yeah. Yeah. BJ also, BJ used oh. to sing background for Anthony Hamilton. Where is Anthony that, Hamilton? That's how I got Anthony Hamilton BJ. Is that's who I want he to is, come back. Listen, Anthony Hamilton is, is a perfect example. You find your group, uh -huh. like people that rock with you. Mm -hmm. You can tour until the end of time. Mm -hmm. And his show is good. And his too. show is great. The Hamiltons are great. Yep. And people rock with them and they listen and enjoy it. Like, so he's I'm more of a live performer these days? Well, I think people just, like Jill Scott, like... Mm -hmm. You might not see Jill Scott selling out the Staples Center, mm -hmm. but you'll see her at like the Novu or something like that. Like, and her, her audience, yeah, and you can make with, bread like oh, that. Absolutely. Who's that? That's dude how they make money. Yeah. Ryan Leslie. Ryan Leslie is still mm -hmm. first Ryan of all. Leslie. Ryan Leslie is the goat. When I had a po podcast, I had Ryan Leslie come on to give information about like how he owns and mixes. He was like, "You guys can do it on your own. You yes. do not mm. need it." Like he was the first person before indie became like a thing yes. to be like, "Hey, I only sold 4,000. I think he said he only sold 4,000 albums and he made $250,000." Yes. Like, what? This and I took that wait, approach. Wait, wait, wait. We're not going to scoot past that. This is what he said. This is what this he said. 4,000 units direct a to quarter consumer mil? marketing. Forget the record label, forget all those pieces. He was like, you don't need to sell 100,000 because mm -hmm. the label's taking so much of that. Right. That's what I did with my tour. It's like, I was on tour with a couple other people and I'm like, I'm getting a third of half. The promoter's taking half yep. and me and the comedians are spending third, but we're selling out 1,500 seaters. I was like, if I sell 400, 
But I get 100%. You'll be making more than what you're making. I don't need to sell 1500 And Ryan Leslie just did that to the max. He did Not to mention he makes all max. his album money and merch. So he that's why I was like, oh, we good. everything himself. He so people say, and masters. that director consumer marketing, that texting thing, uh-huh. that was Ryan Leslie. Yeah. Who put all those artists on that. He's the one that created that whole He oh, sure shine. did. He, yeah. he talked about that on the podcast. That's so he was dope. like, I talk directly to my fans. That's what the stage connection crew, with bro. Them. Wow. So like everybody. He, he sells out the L. He sold, sold, sold out the L. Ray, and it may not be like people may not know, mm-hmm. but when it's your stuff, like yeah. my project that's coming out, I funded my whole project myself. Come on now, really? hey. come on, ownership. executive producer of my stuff. Yay. I produced my stuff along with Son- Sons of Sonic and my dope manager Maisha Brooks. And it's just, I'm now learning. Like, I had management before. They didn't really believe in me. I had a, I was signed to a label before. They Labels have, like, archetypes. Like, if yes. you look like this yes. or you sound like this, you can only do this. Yes. Mm. And for me, it's like, I really want to show people who I am. Because yes. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a black girl from, that grew up in Compton, California. Like, hey. don't let the glee fool you. Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm an LA native. Right. Like, and I grew up in the hood and like, people may not, they only know the actor, the actor side of that, but they don't yeah. know like, the nigga side. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know, <laughs> they don't know this side, but they're going to get to know it. <laughs> so you're going, so you're going 100% independent on this next album? I'm going to be independent. Shout out to you yeah. for that. I'm going to be independent. We actually have so many things to talk about. Yes. Okay. So if you don't know, Amber P. Riley has been my internet friend for years. She is very unhappy with my unpopular opinions. But that's (laughs) not why she's here today. Uh If you don't know Amber Riley at all, say somebody just clicked on this video. Like, I don't know Mm -hmm. Amber Riley. Tell us who Amber Riley is. Um, Amber Riley is an actor and a singer and a dancer. I... And pop, most popular, popularly known from my role as Mercedes Jones in Glee. Um, I won Dancing with the Stars. I was in The Wiz as Adipro, the feel good girl. I just did a movie with Tyler Perry. Um, you did? Tiffany nice. Haddish. Tyler! Come on. Tiffany Haddish, Tika Sumter, Chris Rock, Whoopi Goldberg. I didn't know that. Wow. Um, and I follow you on the ground. Yeah. Gram. So <laughs> I'm like, you know, I, I, I don't, I haven't, I don't have like a long repertoire, but most of the things that I've done is have always propelled my career forward and I've kind of been in every single medium of entertainment even on stage I did dream girls I was Effie White in London on the West End I won an Olivier what was that like? it was hard really? It, really it really tested my um my patience it tested my my ability to just stay focused because mm-hmm. when you do something like Broadway you don't have a life outside of that I've heard that <laughs> yeah, it's eight shows that, yes. a week two on Tuesday and I only did two seven. on Sunday no one has ever done more than Playing that role, no one has ever done more than six shows a week, and I started out doing seven. Really? And by the end, the I was doing vocally? five. Yeah, the demand vocally and energy wise, like I have to start to show off as a a sixteen year old. Mm. So I'm like high energy dancing and singing, and then she gets older toward the end. So it was just a lot every single day. How long uh-huh. were you? Where, did you do that? Over a year. You were on Broadway for a year? Seven on shows the West, a week? I was on the West End. So I was Ooh. on the West End So explain to me what the West End means. The West End is like I'm Broadway, people. but in... <laughs> <laughs> the West End is like Broadway, but it's in London. Got it. Yeah, okay. and okay, theater is very huge out there. Humongous. Yeah. Because they started Shakespeare, all that. That's a part of their culture. Myth. It's ingrained in their culture. Everyone goes to theater school. Like, a lot it's of a British... Part. Pretty much every British actor, I've just found this out on When They See Us or... Not when they see us. Mm. They need us? The, uh, the Spike Lee documentary about film. Oh, they have to have us? or they, Something like that. They gotta <laughs> have even, it? No. I'm not even trying to be funny. It is something like that. They gotta it's, have us. They gotta have us. I think it's they gotta have us. They gotta have us. I think that. But apparently every British actor goes to theater school. Yeah. No, no joke. Like they don't just. It's not a, like a, it's a part of their culture. Wow. They take it very seriously. So, so what do you like the most? What performance medium do you have a preference? Um, I, I I think I go through it. It, it wavers mm. up and down. It just depends on what I feel like my soul needs. And right now, I feel like my soul needs music, so that's where I'm going. That is that amazing. is dope to be able to know what you need and then give it to yourself. Yeah. That's fire. Because I love stand up comedy. The live <clears throat> performance aspect of like making somebody laugh, especially somebody who's been trying not to laugh, which mm. for whatever reason, I go for them the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> it is the best, but I like acting too. They just all have their own thing, but if I could only do one ever, it'd be stand-up comedy. Oh yeah, Kev flexed on me. I asked him about one day, and he was like, oh yeah, I'll be um, filming 
a commercial that those two days, so oh we can't film. I was like, oh. I'll just be flying in from London that we'll, day. We'll, we'll flex on me then. Uh, it's just a little spectral commercial. My third national commercial. But I mean, ah, what's the buck gone? Let gone? me ask you this. Is there a, like, do you, is there a big difference in performing live acting like with the with the Broadway thing versus mm-hmm. just doing like a musical set like is there a, a big difference for you and like you mean you... like doing like a solo set versus like playing a character exactly yeah like... it's a big difference because when like for instance when I played Effie White it's it was more about the emotion than it was about the vocal yeah mm. you know and acting is definitely involved acting is kind of involved in both yeah like when I built sets and um for performances that I do, usually they're covers. I try to build my set with like a story, like, okay, this time is gonna be about, we're gonna talk about heartbreak. Yeah. Or we're gonna, this is gonna be a love set. Like, we're gonna be lovey dovey, you know? So there is a difference, but acting is still involved in both. Gotcha. Got it, got it. So the reason we wanted to chop it up uh, with Amber, mm-hmm. she just recently posted, she'd been working out hard, inspiring me. I'd be like, man, Amber's killing it. When I'm be wanting to go to the gym and I'd be seeing Amber, I'd be like, man, dang. <laughs> and she posted Wait, her- so you get inspired by her, but you mute my stories. It was just, your shirt was <laughs> off I'd be working so out with no shirt, he'd be like, I had to mute your stories, but it you're was just, but He was just sweating. You're fat phobic. I'm yeah. not. I was just grossed out. <laughs> he was sweating, every, every post is just him in the sauna sweating all the- <laughs> Yeah, so if you don't want it. <laughs> You don't have it. I and it's like 12 stories. You yeah, you understand me? He muted me. You just gotta, unmuted me a few weeks ago. It was months ago. <laughs> and I just had enough of the sweatiness. He was jealous. That's I wasn't. Really I was really <laughs> happy for him. But every day with it the... Was, sw- it was jealousy. We're going to talk about that. So, um, We're going to talk about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but Amber was saying that, you know, when you posted your numbers, it was other big people who came for you and I thought that was really surprising because me and really? Dope have a we have a really loving community mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and they defend us from people who are in the comments, especially Dope. He's 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 lost like what is it like fifty pounds in the last Yeah, over the over this over last the last couple months, months right? like fifty, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're three oh three oh eight seven, yes. And then he's down to like two fifty wow. right here, right? And this That's is from incredible. Christmas yeah. to now, right? <laughs> That's incredible. It's ridiculous. Like he yeah. can go up and down like it's it's crazy, right? So I love him for that. I just wanted to not do so many sweaty. Areas. So anyway, so that was really surprising to me because so it's usually dead. skinny people who get right. on us and be like, with him it's your skin and me it's on well, my head, which is not associated with gaining or losing weight. My head is gonna be. It's this a big. constant there. Yeah, but people always got something funny to say, but it's usually not big people. So when you said that, I was like, hold on, now what you talking? Okay, so this is a little bit different. First of all, you're guys, so mm. that's number one. It's Fair. just it's just gonna be different because you're fair. guys. Okay. Our bodies are judged completely di- different. One hundred percent fair. Um, secondly, it, it it dates back to me being on Glee. So I, um, recently have been really focusing and concentrating on my mental health Mm -hmm. um i'm in therapy you know i went through depression and anxiety at the end of last year and i realized that a lot of it stemmed from when i was on glee i was kind of pushed into being this role model for bigger girls Mm -hmm. you know and which would have been okay if i didn't already have all these identity issues so i'm being pushed to be like this role model and people are like i love myself because you love myself but i didn't really like myself oh you know what i'm saying so like i got kind of put put in this um backed into this corner of this is who you are and like now i'm like lying you know saying what the world wants me to say about my body and like i'm okay with this and i'm okay with that and the thing about it is it it didn't allow me to um be honest with myself and really figure out who 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 am i and i'm 34 years old and i'm just now figuring that out ain't that something like i'm literally all that I went through at the end of, of last year, the anxiety, the depression, the, it all had to happen so that I can get to a place where I know myself. So now I started working out last year. Mm-hmm. Haven't had a drink in over 11 months, almost. Is this hey. a whole life change? Because yeah. no boy's recovering alcoholic yes. Yes. three years. Almost mm-hmm. three years. It'll be three years, November 22nd. Yeah, I'm not year. drinking at all. Never so, again? Okay. Yeah, so I have... I have anxiety (laughs) (laughs) so i deal with anxiety and i've written it's mainly social and i realized like i would go out and like have to drink to deal with people Mm -hmm. Mm. and so when i stopped drinking i started working out right yep 
And then that really wasn't working because I wasn't working on the inside. Yep. So then, then you get into therapy. And so when I posted my inches, my measurements yeah. online, that is a year of ups and downs for me and the consistency and pushing past what I thought mentally I could do. Yeah. It had nothing to do with, well, a little bit to do with vanity because mm. I'm fine. But... <laughs> <laughs> And it's nothing wrong with that either. Right, it's not at all. You know, right. but it really was a more about encouraging people to um push past limits, right? So somebody commented on on it and was saying, um, I feel like if it wasn't about vanity, you wouldn't have p- posted your numbers. Um and then people mm. were in my DMs because they didn't want to get told off in my comments right right so right. most of the hate came in my dms <laughs> really? like, oh man i used to love you and now you're you're um coming down to society standard first of all i am well over 200 pounds i am not Too skinny <laughs> i am not skinny like and i'm not trying to be skinny but there's this weird thing with this plus size community which with this and this body positive community like that I just I can't get with, right. you know, and so I've I'm, I've kind of like been separating myself from it. Really? Yeah, because you have to not not that I'm saying like if we're gonna be body positive, we're gonna be body positive for our bodies, whether yeah. somebody stays fat yep. and or not. Right. You know, so if my changing my body in any way mm-hmm. affects you and what you it is you have going on, you need therapy. Yeah. Something is, that is wrong a fact. with you. Like yeah. we are a mirror of one another, mm-hmm. right? So the things that I probably dislike about you are the things I probably dislike about myself. Whew. Deflection. Wow. That is re- deflection that is real. Is a bar. It's a bar. That is crazy. I never really thought about it like that. Me and Doughboy talk about this all the time. Yeah. We've both been overweight for long. Doughboy was was way oh, on a, 486. 486 before and I just been un- unhappy. So we had uh, Deshaun Harrison on a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. and he was talking about this as well and a lot of people were not here for his thoughts. He was basically like, be fat, stay fat. A lot of these health things are not uh, propaganda yeah right, <laughs> right. so people were like so people dm me like kev i don't care what that man says you and what keep working out like, <laughs> we never said we were stopping working out we're we just hearing the guy out, just <laughs> and you guy know, out. And I, do have, I have some plus size you know like girlfriends that are like i'm fat i love myself you know f all y'all right like, i do have some friends that are like that and that's fine right if you are happy that's fine I was not happy. Mm. I was sneaking out of my house in the middle of the night, going to Taco Bell and ordering the whole menu. Talk about it. I've That's done that. not done okay. That. Oh, not so long ago, I've done that. Okay. It's <laughs> not okay. <laughs> it's so it's funny not I okay if you got to do it in shame. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? You know, I knew within me that I could, I could do, I could treat my body better, right? And I could treat myself better. And it was messing with me mentally because I knew that, but I wasn't. I wasn't doing it. That's the funny mm. thing about that is I would do the same thing after shows. So me and Josh and Doughboy to here was all coming back from a show, you know, middle of the night. Like you, you perform late. Come back to the hotel. Everything's closed, but the little, um, you know, uh, the little gift shop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, man, I'm going to bed. Y'all go to bed. Like they go up the elevator. I go up the elevator. <laughs> Come right back Deck down. down. Boop, 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 boop. Chips, ice cream, soda. <laughs> and then eat it in the bed. And then eat it in the bed. So then I talked to them and they were like, yo, when you went upstairs, we just stayed and got chips and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Like, but who are we hiding it from? Exactly. Our body knows what yeah. we ate. Mm-hmm. So I used to hide stuff from my wife. You don't know how many Chick-fil-A sandwiches been eating in that garage. Oh my God. I come in there with a fire too, put it in the neighbor's trash. She's like, well, I don't even eat Chick-fil-A. I don't know who's doing that. That's crazy. Not, right? the, not the neighbor's trash. Oh, I couldn't risk it being in my trash. But you know the kid, somebody had fries, my oldest son, smells like Chick-fil-A fries in here, oh, not yes. me. The kids will expose Oh you. my God. 100%. I had to go let it let it air out. <laughs> like I smoke weed. I'll be like, how my eyes? Are my eyes red? <laughs> I'm high off Polynesian sauce. <laughs> but um, so I've been working out for, again, it's funny, it's part of my set this year. I say, hopefully y'all still laugh you here. I don't, I don't even say it all the time. And I'm like, I've been, I'm trying to lose weight. And then I just be like, I just be saying that. Like I said that for the last 20 years. It but becomes a part of who you are. It just be and trying, right? And part of it for me, this, this go around is the discipline. Like, can mm-hmm. I be disciplined? Because mm-hmm. I'm disciplined in literally so many other, like this, mm-hmm. recording, everything mm-hmm. about my career, like, you know, all that stuff. But with eating right and working out, I cannot be disciplined. And I'm really challenging myself 
to like to see something through. But the thing about your body is like small setbacks career wise Mm -hmm. don't tend to affect me. Like I was at the gym. My brother called me and was like, yo, they passed on the show. And I was like, all right. Like (laughs) didn't even really affect me because I'm I'm so used to that happening. So many things get passed on. It's it's just part of the beast. But you go stand on that scale. And it don't say what you want it to say. I'd oh, be like, I just, well, it, chips it is. <laughs> I'll show you Why, why do you think that the scale affects our mood that much? Because I go through that all the Like, I'm one of those people who <laughs> will weigh himself several times mm-hmm. in a day. And then based on whatever it says, that's how I'm going to live my life that day. Mm. So, like, if it says the wrong thing or that I'm up, I'm like, I might as well just go ahead and just eat everything that's not glued down to the table. Why mm. do you think that we do that? to ourselves when we see that number and become slaves to the scale. Um, One thing that I'm learning, because I'm doing cognitive behavioral therapy, and one thing that I'm learning is sometimes we attach attach emotions or thoughts to things. Mm. And I think it's just been in our psyche our whole entire lives that, first of all, we're such a results-driven people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, we are we want to be pat on patted on the back and told that we're doing well all the time yes. and we want a reward <laughs> you know we want rewards right. like we want trophies pat and I think, me, i'm doing things yeah, yes. and, like, and, and i don't think that we're used to putting in work without results yes and so i think that the scale becomes like uh i, I need validation for what it is that I'm doing for myself yes. instead of just doing it for yourself. Tell me I did Facts. the right thing. Tell right. me it's working the way I yep. want to be working. And the I number's going to tell me that. And the number's going to really congratulate weigh myself. me. I do once a month. Me and my, my trainer just does my measurements. Never I scale. Work. I really don't get on the scale. I mean, I, I got on the scale for the first time in two months, maybe a week ago and like found out I lost like 25 pounds. Man. Wow. So do you have a, a measurement in mind? Do you have a goal weight in mind or you just really want to feel don't. like you want to get addicted to the, to the results? Mike Todd said he's a pastor I freaking mm-hmm. love. Yeah, I He love was Mike saying Todd. about, I don't think he, actually was talking about losing weight mm-hmm. and he was saying kind of similar to what you were saying and he was saying like, we need to get addicted to the process mm. instead of the result. Period. Woo. Because everything, if you can get addicted to the process, you won't be thrown off if the results that day aren't reflective. Because overall, the results mm. are going to be reflective while the work. And the same thing with me building my like Kev on stage page. Like, bro, there's way back. But there was days where this video get like, I remember when 100 views was a lot. Yeah. And then like a thousand. And then some days you get like a thousand in a row, then one would get 200. But I was like, my goal wasn't to get a certain amount of views. It was to post a video at first once a week, then three times a week, then seven mm-hmm. times a week. And going viral was never the goal. So that's why people be like, how do you keep posing? They don't do well. Like, bro, I don't really care. Just throw it against the wall. It's not about like <laughs> going viral. It never was. If it goes viral, that's uh, luck anyway. Yeah. But I I struggle trying to apply that to, uh, working, out. to working out. Because I think it's a consistency thing. Yeah, for sure. Last year, um, like I said, when I stopped drinking, I kind of started putting all my focus into working out. And I still... I still really didn't like myself. Like I'm, mm. I'm, I'm in, I'm working through all these things that I dealt with when I was a kid and that I dealt with after Glee was over because that was a whole other like. Mm. I was gonna ask you about that because you were on a. <laughs> that was you. a whole other. You thing. were on a. I watched Glee. Mm-hmm. Um, network. Not only were you on a television show, you're on a network television show, mm-hmm. and it was a smash hit. Everybody was talking about it. When it was out. Phenomenon, yeah. Yeah. like. And there's not many shows that are like everyone is talking about. Right. So you were on how many seasons was it? Uh, six seasons. Six Gosh. seasons, and then mm-hmm. as Hollywood goes, things end. Whether six or seven, it's canceled mm-hmm. or they stop, whatever it ends for everyone. Yeah. The Office, Seinfeld, it ends. Yeah. Then what is it like to be on like every magazine? Everybody talking about it. It was in like Glee was in the office. Yeah. They stopped the office to watch an episode of Glee. Uh, <laughs> and it was like, it was everything, Dang. right? Yeah. It was like, that was yeah. a whole episode on the office. It was about People use that Glee parties and like. Glee parties. Wow. It was crazy. Yeah. And then that's over. So, what is that like to go from America's Sweetheart on the most popular show ever to just Amber Riley again? It was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that. I felt it <laughs> like too. that's really real because it's like okay, I've had this job for I don't know how long, and I'm already like you know 
a black woman. I'm a plus size woman. Mm -hmm. I'm a plus size black woman. I'm yeah. a woman. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's not very many roles out there for me. Right. I know that I'm talented. Yeah. You know, a, a, a big part of uh, my issue with identity growing up was when I didn't feel like I was being validated for my looks because I didn't see anyone that looked like me on television yep. or movies that were being praised for their beauty. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when I felt like I wasn't being validated in that way, I just started putting all my focus in my talent. That's mm. crazy. All I did the same thing my entire I get life. That. All I of my focus and, and energy went to singing, dancing, making people laugh, yeah. um, being, you know, being the person in the room that could, you know, make people feel comfortable or being the person in the room that entertained, that was the entertaining person because then nobody looking at me so I can be the, the entertainer of the party. Right. Um, and so I was being validated for my talent on that show on a huge platform. Yes. Mm. To like, not at all. And it's an abrupt it's an it abrupt fast. ending. Yeah. Like it's like There's no it like never, wind down, no nah. cool down. The show's on, the show is off. The show is off and then it's just like my I'm fortunate enough that I was on the show and I got to showcase my talent as a singer and I wasn't push forward so much that people can't separate me from a character. Mm. Like that's that's that's, that's the thing. fortunate that's yeah. the fortunate yeah. part part for me. Yeah. Um the unfortunate part was like I'm not making the same money that I was making. I was gonna ask uh, you about that. We ain't going to the same parties. We're not invited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How does invited. that this is one of my freaking fears yeah, about like, Hollywood and low key one of the reasons I'm so happy my career is a different thing mm -hmm. because that I Confidence wise for me, just keeping it a thousand. Mm. I don't know how I would feel being, oh, you're this person. You can come in, you can do whatever you want. And then, oh, that show's not on. You're not that person mm -hmm. anymore. You know what I mean? Because I've never been let into Hollywood, period. So <laughs> you, you don't even know what you're I don't be getting invited already. <laughs> so I can't be not, I'm already not invited. Yeah. But um, I never really thought about that. Like when you're on that hit show, you are, I mean, TMZ, everything, like you're on everything. And then, like, the money changes, the attention changes, mm -hmm. the fanfare. I'm assuming the people, the hangers on yeah. who were hanging on. Well, see, I'm fortunate because I'm fr I'm actually from L.A. So the people that I hang out with are not even in this business. Mm. Like, oh, my my are friends peaks. are like, my friends <laughs> in my village is strong. Like, oh, that's good. So that has always been good. The, the issue was it was an identity issue. Yeah. Because you put all of your identity in that one thing mm. and you forget like um, you forget. First of all, I forgot. Not that I forgot God in my mm -hmm. life. It's mm -hmm. not that I, I forgot who he was. It was just I was it's OK to enjoy what it is. that you. It's OK to enjoy success. Right. It's mm. not OK to forget who got you there. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Facts, and I think facts. for me, it wasn't that I forgot it's uh no it was that i kind of forgot i think i d did lose hold of like he got you there so he has you after mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah like, for sure and and after he did it, all these little gig these gigs and things that i've did they were all really big things yeah. like they weren't just you know small things they also were you know big things but i had to figure out after okay where where first where's your faith and your trust gonna lie mm -hmm. and what do you think about yourself and I remember the first time I got in therapy. I should have gotten in therapy right after that. Right. <laughs> That's that. that. I should have gotten in therapy right after the show ended, honestly. But my, I remember my, my therapist asked me, like, who are you? And I just completely unraveled because I couldn't First answer. First question, Dang. who are you? God! You ain't caring I'm going to I'm going to sing You're going to start with the Lord. tough stuff? <laughs> who am I? <laughs> I just started therapy too, so I I've been holding back. But I I man, that's so interesting because I can totally see that happening. Mm -hmm. And and the other thing is, Hollywood is an interesting thing that is hard to explain to people mm -hmm. of going from like relatively no one mm -hmm. to massive star right in like that like that right. show. It wasn't like a slow build. Mm. That show came out and the world was like. The pilot. Yes, right. They literally showed the pilot before we even shot a season. And we went on tour in Australia, a signing tour in Australia. Off of a pilot? Hold on. I don't think I've ever heard of that happening that's, before. That's, I don't think that's it's ever happened before. Happened. That's crazy. It's never happened where they showed a pilot and waited, made people wait a whole entire summer before. So we shot the, we shot the pilot. Um, we found out that it got picked up 
at the end of kind of like the end of the year I, i'll never forget the day <coughs> that i found out i was down to like my last like 20 dollars and um i was singing at this award ceremony because my my brother does like events and stuff my little brother <coughs> And he hired me to sing at this award ceremony. I think mm. I was making like $75. And I was like, oh, God, I don't have like a dress. I got to find a dress. So I remember walking down the street from the event to to Goodwill, found a dress, used my last $20 to buy that dress. Dang. I was in the bathroom putting it on. And I got a phone call. And they were like, we got, you know, we got the show. And I was like, what? They were like, they picked up the show, 22, uh, like 22 oh, episodes. Man, and what? I started screaming. <laughs> I want to scream now. Like, I just booked it. <laughs> I started screaming. My brother, came, he was like, what is going on? Like, because I'm screaming. Right, right. Like, and you know, and, and it takes, sometimes it takes a long time. Like, it had been months since we had heard anything. Mm -hmm. So, I, and, and they don't tell you, you know, you don't really what? know. Yep. Right. You know, they're not going to tell you what well, they're deliberating. They're thinking about it, you know, and Just then radio silence. Yep, so what had happened? Take me back to that time in your life. Like, so obviously that's the mm -hmm. biggest thing that you had done. Mm -hmm. But like, had you been on TV before? Had you done anything? Like, what was your day to day mm -hmm. life? I worked at Ikea. Wow. And I used to sing during break times in the karaoke machine. Um, wow. And people used to make me sing all the time. I actually ran into one of my old coworkers. She works at the airport. <laughs> and she came out the bathroom. I was like, oh my God. She was like, you remember me? I was like, yeah. She was like, I used to make you sing every day in the break room. <laughs> so I used to sing all the time. I mean, I worked at Ikea. I, I did ba background for whomever. I used to do demo work for, you know, writers and mm. stuff in the studio. I, um... I used to sing at clubs. Like when I was 16, I wasn't supposed to be in there. I like sneak in with the band. <laughs> like, you know, I I, mean, I, I kind of did like a yeah, little bit of right. everything, but Glee was like the first. Oh, well, when I was much younger, I did do a pilot um, called Saint Sass that was supposed to be a more like spicy version of Facts of Life. Mm -hmm. And I did it with Ryan Murphy. And Ryan Murphy is the one that created Glee. Oh, wow. So, wow. Be all connected. It's oh. all connected. And and the way that I even found out about it was, found out about the audition was a friend's roommate was friends with the casting director. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they were like, we just can't find a, a black girl that can sing and act. Yeah. We need someone that can do both yeah. really well. Like they mm. need to be able to really, really, really sing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they also need to be able, you know, to, to act. act. And, um happenstance they were like oh you know when i know this girl amber and i borrowed we borrowed somebody's car and drove wow. down to hollywood and i did that audition. and your life changed literally That's and i didn't even know chills. ryan murphy was involved <laughs> wow so what was it like when you went from 20 dollars to start getting network that, tv right. checks it was interesting <laughs> <laughs> for a long time i didn't spend any money really just because you thought it might go away, it might go away. i didn't want to buy a car i really like i just Cause that's what you know trauma like mm -hmm. that's what poverty it does. trauma i don't want to lose this i don't want to lose like i have know, to hold it to this to this to this day like i remember when i was younger always losing socks or not having enough socks and i buy so many pairs of socks Wow! like it's like a it's yeah. like a thing every time i go out i don't even realize i'm doing it and i just grab socks because it's just like this that's 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 that's, that's <laughs> that so insane thing. how it how our it's mind processes so, stuff like that. That poverty trauma be it's real. real. Cause those that real. that money is legit. Yeah. Like legit money. No. You're just like, no, because it's it's gonna be gone one day. Yeah. So, and we and we've talked about this before. To this day, no matter how much, regardless of what my account balance is on my debit card, mm -hmm. every time I am doing a sizable purchase, I still get nervous that it's not gonna go through. <laughs> I still be sitting there like, please go. And I know that there's money in the account, yeah. but I'll be like, Woo, it went through. Oh, praise every God. Every time what, I, I do it. Because that was time. so much a part of your life forever. <laughs> I've really been declined before. Yeah, I've been <laughs> declined <laughs> too. I've been declined and be like, well, they got me. That me shoot. I was just hoping like, for oh, you got I was hoping right, it would man. go overdrawn a little bit. <laughs> well, they got me. <laughs> 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 all right, man. All right, I'll get you next time, big dog. Oh, my God. <laughs> so what is it like being a black woman in Hollywood? You're, you're plus size. Mm -hmm. There's, like you were saying, there's not that many roles. There's in the roles it's it's so here's the thing i actually thought i never told you this but i had movie ideas for to for you to be in and because in real life people are married to big women mm -hmm. it's not a topic of conversation it really mm -hmm. isn't i it's didn't just, know that i was plus size when i until i got on glee and i was like oh <laughs> what <laughs> well, all the bitches i hang around look like me so. <laughs> <laughs> 
cool. We're going to rock. We're going to rock. We're going to rock this out then. Oh, no, for real though. Are you going right. to black church? Yeah. That's regular women. Regular. Like, oh, that's, your, that's your boy's right. wife. This is the right. first lady. That's just Keisha. That's, that's just, <laughs> bro. That's who that is. <laughs> that is just regular yeah. life. Yeah. But in Hollywood, it is the collection Different. of the smallest, most beautiful people in the world. Mm. So, and if you weren't like actively trying to be in Hollywood every second of your life, it probably felt like even more culture shock for mm. you. Mm. Um, and what is that like? Because that business isn't built on regular body yeah. people. And for men it's not an issue. You yeah. we could be big, we could be ugly. Oh yeah. I for mean for women it is a it is completely different. Thing. It's completely different for women. I mean women in general in our we're just judged by our bodies. We judge one another. We let other people judge us. We find like our our confidence and I mean you know you see online on Instagram mm -hmm. girls you know there's nothing there's nothing wrong with showing your body in my opinion on right. Instagram if you want to be naked that's your business yeah. I just hope that you're doing it because you want to do it and not because facts right this world for makes likes. you feel like right. you need to do that for likes yeah. you know but I don't think that there's anything wrong with it at all but um, the world just views us differently and so I have to I, number one I have a really dope agent. Um, I have a couple of I have a couple of agents at my agency and um he really believes in my talent and he mm -hmm. puts me in he puts me in for stuff where they're not looking for me. Mm -hmm. They may not be looking for who yeah. I, exactly who I am, but dope. we're still gonna put you in front of this casting director because we want them to know that you're an awesome actor. Yeah. And so eventually they may have something or keep in mind or like, you know, you were impressive enough. And that's just the game of you know yeah. the, of the acting world. We're contracted workers. We nothing yes. is mm -hmm. nothing is guaranteed at all. It's right. just a job, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Are just, it is, it is. Even Denzel, mm -hmm. like when Denzel finishes a movie, he's just looking for the next yeah. job. Like mm -hmm. until then, he's unemployed. <laughs> Most of his life is unemployed. Yeah. You never really think of it like no. that, but We're that's absolutely workers. the truth. Because he yeah. gets paid so much, right. but like the rest of the people, casting directors and stuff, they just looking for the next check, mm -hmm. makeup. Yeah. Like Ruthie Carter, I was I was talking to her. It sounds like I'm name dropping, <laughs> but I I got to interview her for when I was working the NAACP thing, and she was like, "I've been out here for years. Mm -hmm. Like I've been out here. I just Black Panther just shot me to yeah. the thing. Mm -hmm. So then on that the Netflix thing, I saw her filmography, bro. She'd been doing she's stuff been doing probably it for forever, a thirty years. We all don't know though. We know her. We work. know. Right. Or I mean. I know her work, but I didn't know her work. You I mean knew. no, no? Uh, like she did all like so many of Spike Lee's movies, mm -hmm. really. But I just I realized I don't really look for who the costume designer is mm -hmm. that much, right? But in Black Panther, I was like, okay, I gotta know who, who did, did this, this. right? Because I was so invested in it. But like that's what it is for most people. Like you just looking for you're bouncing to the next job, man. Absolutely. Yep. So what is it like for you going from Glee? Uh, to then have to go back through the audition process. Mm -hmm. Like, what is that like for your psyche? Because I have never booked anything. <laughs> I remember you saying that. Outside you don't book I really remember. I remember you saying that. I've <laughs> never booked. So it's, it's, <laughs> you know, it also, uh, co co culture has a lot to do with, um, with what's on TV, too. Yeah, a lot of sure. writers are, are writing what's popular, and what's happening like in the news or on social media. So that has a lot to do with it. So don't mm. be discouraged. Mm. Cause it may just be like, you know, that's just not what we're what we're writing about right, right now. Right, right. 36 year old um, men of children in middle school. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, it, it's it's it, it's interesting. I mean, like I, I definitely get the producer and director call, so that's mm. That's really dope. Oh, snap. That's dope. Yeah, so that's really dope. And and sometimes I get offers. Like, I just got offered to film and I just signed, you know, for... So that's no audition, no nothing. It's no, just yeah. straight offer. Offer, offer only. Offer yeah. only. Some stuff, some stuff I'll be like, no, offer only. Like, I'm not going to audition for this. You know that I can do this, so I'm offer only. That's a flex. <laughs> yeah. well, me like, and Doughboy did this, uh, his studio pilot, and we didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. So, uh, should we say the name? Who is who is? Well, I would have to say the name. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole reason why he asked me to say um, Christina Milian was offer only oh, yeah. for the thing. We were yeah. just like, we probably couldn't get her in the way. It just was like, I see, we were like, what but, does offer only mean? That that mean, the person was like, that means their agent says, you want her, you book her right, in right. audition. Yeah. So we were like, well, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> totally we were like, we, we, don't, we don't really have offer only money. <laughs> <laughs> but I respect that. Right, absolutely. Right. I didn't even know you did a movie with Tyler Perry recently. Like, you've been consistently doing good. Doing stuff. Last year, 
Yeah, I did it. Le- it came out last year, I believe. Um, but when, yeah, what movie was it? It was a. Uh, um, it, it was called The List, but they changed it. It's not The List. It's that's always stuck in my brain. Mm. It was. Um, <sighs> Who else was in it? Tika Sumter was in it. Tiffany Whoopi Goldberg. Haddish, she told Whoopi you. Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, I think I seen that movie. Is that the one with, when Tiffany had got out of jail? Yeah. Why can't I think of yeah, what it's called? It was called like, Cause it was called the list for such a long time, right. and then they changed. The, I seen that movie. The name of no, it. Nobody's fool. Nobody's, nobody's fool. fool. Just nobody's the right fool. pack. Right yeah. there we go. Shout out. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this question, because I dealt with this with Wildin' Out. Because when I did Wildin' Out, mm. I did a total of five seasons. And like right around like the third season, I had lost like 100 pounds. And then when I went back on the show, I kind of felt like I had lost my identity on mm-hmm. the show because I had always been the big guy. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, I'm not even the biggest person on the show. Mm-hmm. And I know you were saying earlier that you're talking about like you had come, like low-key become like a spokesperson for a bigger woman. Like, did you ever feel pressure to maybe like even hold on to weight because of your job and like how people perceive you? Yeah, I think I, I got into a, a space where I was like, well... If I lose the weight, are people not going to be able to, um, the audience that I do have, are they not going to be able to identify? Right, or relate to. Mm. Or relate to me. And then literally like the last, all of this healing and this growth that I've gone through has Mm. literally been within like the last couple of months, maybe the last six months. Really? Yeah, and it's been like accelerated because now I'm starting to realize I can't worry about what other people think Mm, of me. I have to do me. And literally, like, I worked out a lot last year, and I really wasn't, like, dropping major inches or anything Mm -hmm, like that. mm -hmm. It wasn't until I started just showing up. Okay, step one is going to be showing up. Yep. Mm. Yep. That's it. That's it. Just being there. That's the victory in just being there. Yes. Step one is going to be showing up, you know, and then step two is going to be I'm not going to eat fried food. You know, and then step through, and it's just, it's literally what you were saying about the discipline. Yeah. I literally just wanted the discipline. That's yes. all that I wanted because now it affects every area of my life. Yes. I clean up my room before I go to bed. I make mm. sure that I'm washing, you know, I wash all of my clothes on this certain day. I, like today when I dropped off in my car, we were going back and forth. Mm-hmm. And he was going back and forth. And I was like, girl, <laughs> I got car service for you. Right? She's like, nah, I was like, drive. nah, I can drive. <laughs> I dropped my car up to be serviced and I was like, dang, I didn't get up for my hike. So I'm just going to walk home. And it was a two mile walk home. Mm. You like, was just huffing it in the streets of L.A.? No, there is definitely power in that statement because I also like a lot of times if I feel like if I can't do it perfect, I won't do it. At Ooh, all. And so is, now ooh, I change that. Me. So sometimes <laughs> I might not have a whole hour to do yeah. cardio, mm-hmm. but I can do 20 minutes. Yep. Yep. And you know what I'm saying? So I'll be like, all right, let me go get what I can get now yeah. and then I'll just throw something on it later. So there's really a lot Dope of power. Dope helped me a lot because I was... I, I, I be. Is that why you up. unmuted him now? I unmuted him now, <laughs> and he just decided he's not going to be posting any of his workout stories. Yeah, I, this I, is the thing he goes back and forth about. Why? I've I, been I, al- I, why? I, okay, so I'll tell you why. Because I was starting to realize that. I was starting to be coddled by the audience. And there was a lot of power yeah. in what you just said a few minutes ago, how we always want pats on the back and mm-hmm. different stuff. And I'm like, if I don't make the goal that I hit and then everybody's being super supportive, like, hey, don't worry about it. No, no, no. I have a goal that I set for myself and I want to complete it. So mm. let me just stop with all these updates. Let me just come back when it's finished. And I only said yeah. that because I'm down to like the last 20, 25 pounds. So I'm like, you know, and then plus with like losing weight, it's like a real intimate a, thing with yourself. I'm like, I got to take these last few steps by myself. I can't yeah. even share this part with everybody because yes. this is so personal. And social media me. sometimes baits us into sharing more stuff. Absolutely. Than necessary. Mm-hmm. Because, and because it's, you've started it, mm-hmm. you yes. feel like they're a part of it. And then people start reaching out and asking you about it. We were just talking about that today. Cause yeah. like people, cause I, I had a weigh in that I was supposed to do on um, on Sunday. But like I weighed in, I had gained like three pounds. I was just like, oh, I ain't gonna put this up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, but this. you have ups and downs and <laughs> right. we, you, your body gains weight for other reasons <laughs> other than just like, sometimes it'd be like, for no reason. Exactly. Yes. And so then people were like starting to hit my DM 
Man, where's the way? Hey, where's the way? Where you, nah, nah, you don't need I that pressure. Okay, leave me alone. <laughs> you don't need that pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that pressure. You don't need that And I was like, no, nah, I'm gonna end up getting stressed out, mm-hmm. mad that I didn't hit that number, being a slave to that scale, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna gain 20 pounds because I will do it. Doughboy can put them. I have back different on. With weight. Like, I, I saw him in <laughs> mid December. I went to Japan and came back. He was three. I was like, Doughboy, you good? He was like, it's been a dark time. <laughs> yeah, man. That's what they, hey, fat cells have memory. Listen. For real, for real. <laughs> they, we, they have memories. I just be see. I'll be looking for balance because we just dealt with this earlier today, and this will show you how sometimes my mind. I wasn't going to share this, but I'm glad you this did. This literally happened today. I literally was telling Kevin, I was like, you know what? For this last 20 pounds, no diet soda, no sugar. It's a whole no new real meat. sugar, no fake sugar, no sugar. I said no sugar, no fake sugar. He was like, all right, dope man, you go ahead and do that. Randomly, and two hours later, he's just like, hey man, I'm gonna go get a boba tea. Anybody want anything? I was like, I'll go with you. I go over there with them to the donut shop. And then I end up, as we get into the store, I'm like, hey, man, let me get a cinnamon roll. Mind you, I'm not supposed to be eating no sugar, no nothing. <laughs> no and then I go sugar, from no that to, man, just give me a dozen. And, so and then me I, and Josh like, walk in, the dude, he's on his sixth donut. He went in before like, us. We're like, yo, why are you buying a dozen? We just came for Why would you buy a dozen? dozen? And then I said, yo, we got the guests coming and everything. And so he's like, she's eating right. Why would you do I was like, But you didn't bring me one, though. No, oh, they're out there. No, no. <laughs> I ain't seen but, I ain't seen but there. that's the thing I just don't do good in balance either I'm yeah. I'm kale and water or I'm pizza for breakfast yeah and I Go just be looking for the connecting balance and it's very difficult yes yeah, also you have to uh, evaluate your relationship with food mm. too I had to evaluate my relationship with food like mm. when I, I had like I had to evaluate my relationship with alcohol like yeah. okay you're only drinking you don't drink alcohol when you're at home but you do drink it when you're out and like that's still not good. You should be able to deal with people. And that's when my anxiety got bad mm. because I stopped drinking. So did you stop going out? Or you like, I, I like stopped people. going out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like you guys sober, you know? I <laughs> I'm just gonna stay home. stopped going out because I really, I'm not as social as people probably would think that I am. I'm not, I'm very kind and I'm very nice yeah. and I like people. <laughs> I just, you know, would get nervous in big, in big groups do you feel like people do you always get the i get this a lot and double does too mm-hmm. the pressure of being on all the yeah, time yeah people want you there's to a be lot on. of Sam Riley, Sam Riley. Yeah. and you got to be like you know that Turn person on. that probably doesn't didn't help with your anxiety yeah because sometimes i'm just quiet and people and i'm a lot more quiet than people think that i am mm. so i'm really ob- observant too so yeah. i'll sit and i'll just be like you know looking and people be like well what's wrong are you okay or <laughs> or i'll go some like go somewhere and they'll be like try to put a mic in my face to get me to sing like no nah, i'm good like and you know people are like <laughs> uh. <laughs> like, was mean to me <laughs> yeah i've gotten that like not 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 even mean like she was she was weird and i'm like no i have anxiety so <laughs> <laughs> that, that's so interesting <laughs> To me. That's why I was Summer Walker. Right. People were yeah. like, "How could you be this talented and like have social anxiety?" Like, you do realize these are two totally separate but, things. I, but I think the thing that uh, that also like that when I think about that, like you know, a person who is a performer that has anxiety, mm-hmm. I think the thing that throws me is that because that your job is so closely connected with being in front of large groups of people, even when mm-hmm. you're shooting Glee, like there's you see six, seven people on mm-hmm. this camera, but there's but I feel like a bunch of people mode around and, you. Yeah. And social mode are different. It's different. I find confidence and comfort in my talent. Oh snap, that's good. That so, makes perfect. So sense. I can sing in front of big groups like because you're singing because i'm singing but when and, you're just and i'm not me you're just being right. i'm not me you know when i'm yeah. up there now i'm trying to marry marry the two and it was interesting what you were saying about how like you don't want to post everything mm-hmm. like i've been very careful about what i post online because people are so uninformed about mental health oh. and mental illness Oof. it's crazy i feel like we only really started uninformed. talking about this maybe two or three years ago yeah maybe publicly. you're being nice yeah. you're being very generous in that yeah, yeah. At growing what? up oh it was not even a no it's taboo yeah. right. completely you're taboo, crazy especially black and oh. black yeah. church you're crazy right. you just and that was a, a main thing with me like you know my mom's a, a minister i grew up around the word i believe in the word you know and it was hard to um it kind of felt like it was one or the other. Either you mm. believe that you're going to be healed or like That's you, so you're not a believer, you know. And the thing about anxiety or depression is you have to acknowledge it mm-hmm. and you have to have like 
almost accept it to work through it. Mm, you can't, fighting fact. fighting against it makes it worse. That is a and by, fact. And so in, in the Bible, in, in, in the church, it's mm. like speak life, speak life, mm. and you can't you can't claim those mm. things. Mm. So how can I claim it for healing, and not claim it for Jesus to heal me? Mm. But it's a, it's so interesting because. How silly would you be to go to the doctor and you have like a big wound on your yes. leg, right? Mm. And you put a bunch of makeup over it, right? Yes. And then you go to the doctor and be like, yo, I, you know, I, I, I don't really know why I'm here. You know, <laughs> I guess my leg is, I guess <laughs> my leg is hurting. Is like, <laughs> and you, you've terribly covered it up. Yeah. They can clearly see that you have a wound on your leg, yes. but you don't want to show them. Right. It's the same, it's the same it's exact thing same with, with mental health and like, um, where I was going with it was like I've been careful about what I post. I just uh, did my first talk telling my story at my church, mm. and I'm happy to say that my church is all about mental health. Yeah, and they they are not taboo about it, and they've been so supportive. My pastor texted me every other day when I was going through what I was going through. Really? That's yes. Dope. And she was just um, shout out to Hope's House. Hey. Shout out you to Pastor. Yeah, Pastor wow. Andrea Humphrey and Pastor Chuck. Hope's house? Yeah, that's yeah. my church. I went to Hope's house for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and they had a they had a mental health um they had like this mental health event and their daughter, it was her senior project. Oh and wow. And wow. I spoke and like I, I kind of went back and forth about putting it on social media. People, a lot of people noticed that I was off social media for a while. You were for a minute. Yeah. The stories were really funny. Didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> you and your sister was hilarious. Oh, yeah. My, me and my sister are nuts. Like, yeah. we, we really went away, and I was like, man, where's that? She should have come in here and did this interview with me, but I'm sure she's in there sleep. She sleep, huh? She sleep? Yeah. She sleep? <laughs> <laughs> my sister's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I was enjoying the story. She's hilarious, yes. <laughs> Um, but I, I was like, you know, I don't I never wanted to talk about it on social media because mm. like what you were saying, like people are so uninformed. Right. And I don't think that social media is a, a safe space for for that all the time. Not at all. No, um, but I have I, totally I have the whole entire talk. I put a snippet of the talk, just like the little funny part on mm. Instagram, just to see what people, you know, would little say. Teaser just to yeah. Fill her out. And like and, you know, I was like, <laughs> I could put this on IGTV, but like. I'm more about helping people that want to be helped as opposed to attention seeking yeah. or not to say that anybody that talks about it online is attention seeking because that can be healing for them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But for me, it's, it's, it's deeper than that. Yeah. You know, once you've gone through it, it's just, it's, it's just, it's different. It's yeah. not as easy to talk about. It's not a thing where you want a spotlight like Fact. shown on it or for people to define what it is in your life for you. Oh, yeah. Or dissect it for you and then talk. Like, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, that, it's a whole thing. Yeah. Me and Doe talk about this a lot because on the internet, everyone seems to be an expert mm -hmm. because people just jump in on stuff they feel confident to talk mm -hmm. about. Right. And if you don't feel confident, or don't. You, you, or, or, <laughs> yeah. or you're a complete idiot and you just want to talk. And, <laughs> and I was telling Doe, because we always go back and forth about commenting back and forth with people. Mm -hmm. And I said, bro, when I was at like Boeing and stuff, bro, I just wanted something to talk about. Mm -hmm. Like if you were going to give me your life and I'm commenting, all I really want to do is make my work day go by. Right. And you out here really of the conversation. with, yeah, you really struggling with this after a while. I'm like, oh, it's 2.30? All right, I'm out. And I go back home and you really are like, man, and he said what? And sometimes it's literally a child. Like mm -hmm. my son be on YouTube making funny comments and, you know, begin all these likes. And I'm like, sometimes this is literally a 12 or 13 year old. Mm -hmm. but you are really like letting your day, whole, you know, a whole day go by uh, or letting them, you know, affect your whole day. And it's. It's unhealthy. That happened to yeah. me the, uh, two weeks ago. We did the Precious episode. Mm -hmm. And somebody puts a comment on a thing like, yeah, replace Doughboy with Precious. She's the real ratchet. Like, <laughs> get somebody new on here. I, I, you know, I take that offensively because yeah. I'll be producing yeah. the show. So I, I did what I tried not to do. And I responded. I said, yeah. hey, man, blah, blah, blah. I think I was being like sarcastic. Like, okay, I'll, I'll remove myself from the show. You're the one that caused this. Shout out to you being super sarcastic, and, and then they responded. Guess how they responded? What? Oh man, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Exactly. Man, I was just joking, and I was like, it happened again. They get me <laughs> every single, and I promise myself I won't go back and forth for people, and I always do. I will skip a hundred positive comments, mm. see the one bad one, and be like, hey, you don't like me? Why? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why I'm like that. I just I, I I stop responding to people, and they just stop commenting. <laughs> like I don't really get negative stuff Listen. under my comments, really. Because I just, yes. I just, 
ignore it. We had some questions from our audience, if you don't mind. Okay. Amber, yes. Amber P. Riley. You should come back and do game night with us. Keep it cute. And you be breaking it down. We're only going to do you the talk. cute Thank stuff. You. Yes, that's a solid point. These are uh, some from our... This is from our audience. Okay. Not, our this is just our Patreon people, so they don't... Uh, uh, they don't be tripping. Okay. They, they'd be great. So cool. uh, Ty says, can we expect you to be on Terrell's show? She's one of your favorite episodes. Um, I'm sure I'll be back on there. Terrell's one of my uh, great friends. Terrell, so. everybody loves Terrell. Yeah. I want to go on that show, but I can't sing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would actually be funny. I would. I, would, I know I'll, me and my wife play Song Association uh-huh. at home. <laughs> Just, just to be, she'd be like Rose and I'd be like kiss from above <laughs> like it is so fun you don't have to be able to sing to like that game uh, Daisha says when did you realize you could sing and what song were you singing um, I've, I've man I've been singing my whole entire life uh, the first song that I remember singing was Prayer Away by Yolanda Adams I think I was like oh three. you start off with Yolanda mm-hmm. yeah my mom is a singer so really I just grew up with that in my house I feel like we don't we don't give Yolanda enough. We don't because listen, I just did an event with her. Still got it. First of all, it was on my birthday, so it was the best birthday gift <laughs> hey. ever. And she did a jazz version of "Open Up My Heart." What you talking? That's jazz my favorite. Version? Yeah, Yolanda Adams is otherworldly. Otherworldly. She's, she don't age. She her does voice is still strong not as it was. Age. And I was on her like. Probably eight years old. Mm. That's a big gospel. Yeah. <laughs> Battle's not yours. Okay, so this is an interesting one. You can you can pass if you want. Okay. How did you do with being the most talented singer on Glee but not getting the most attention? Pass. Okay. Ooh. Let me I, here, take here, that here. out, Josh. Here we, here we go. I got, I got, this you can keep of, it in, Josh. <laughs> she said We're it. getting a lot of this. And people are asking this. When do we get the album? Can't wait to hear it. My EP is coming out very soon. I just finished it. So, what was that like ooh. when it was finally done? I mean, I've been working on it for eight months. Um, the last song that I wrote was the most, like, literally telling, not telling my business, but you will hear my heart. I cried the whole entire session. Really? You cried the session and sang? Was it like I physically the whole, ta- taxing? It was hard to get the words out to sing it because that's real so pain true. though I, yeah. I, you could always like feel it when you're yes. yeah I and i think it's to gonna to open up the, the ep i actually played a little bit of it on my instagram today Uh-oh. i played a little bit of I, the, um what you um, talking i posted it on my instagram just a little snippet of that that particular song it's become my favorite song on the how many radio. songs are on the ep just six let me ask you ah, this big fan of the six yeah. <laughs> i love this Six is a great number six, it is 28 minutes yeah. is good music it gives yeah. you a great sample size of yes what you need to josh get. has mm-hmm. sent me a lot of albums mm-hmm. where it's like four to six songs mm-hmm. and you're like I you like a good game. Yeah. And then they come up with another six. And right? people's like it. attention span is getting shorter and shorter. It yeah. really is, though. The songs are getting shorter and shorter? <laughs> they yeah. are. But Rihanna you know, back Jay had a day, short songs one. were short. Remember, if you watch no, songs Ray, used to be long. No, no, no. no listen, they Ray, used to be long, They but they would have a radio edit. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Radio and then they'd have the album version. It'd be super long. Because the Papa Rose the Rolling Stone was like two minutes of just Yeah, dude. Let me ask you this. <laughs> I know that you said you 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 pretty much completed the album over the mm-hmm. last eight months, and you also went through probably one of the biggest metamorphoses of your yeah. life. So, do are we going to hear that like a lot of those yes. experiences on the album? So, when I went through all that I went through, it was so necessary. Like, mm-hmm. I thank God that I went through all that I went through mm-hmm. because it caused me to stop um, ignoring and bottling stuff up, mm-hmm. and like put it in, take it from my subconscious, put it right here in front of my face. And challenge my thoughts. I like I, I got to challenge, you know, who who am I? Who does God say that I am? What is it that I really think about myself? Like I remember sitting with my sister, I'm like, dang, I really don't like myself. Mm. Like just telling my sister, like, I don't like myself. And she was like, Well, why? And you know, we had a conversation about it. And so going through all of that and now in therapy, my 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 therapist gave me five pillars that you need to always have and it's like sleep hygiene like Mm -hmm. exercise and exercise has been a big a really big one for me um my whole perspective of who i am and what i can do has changed so even my pen is different are you in that Ooh, bag now? It's di- my pen I is feel the confidence like radiating. <laughs> I feel it. You. I wasn't gonna say it. No, I, I feel really it. feel like you are 
like feeling yourself Absolutely. and not in a negative way. Right. Like I can, I feel you really believing the words that you say yeah. and mm-hmm. that confidence is just exuding out of you. I can't wait to listen yeah. to oh, the me project. Too. Yeah. I can't wait to see what you're doing because it seems like you're not even like, you're not tying your success to the success of this project or the projects. It's like no. you needed to do this for you. I mm. really literally had to do this for myself. Yeah. And the the stuff that like I and I had to see what I could do. Yeah. Like there was one day where um, a couple of writers that ended up uh, canceling the session. And, like, I was always insecure about writing by myself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Beyonce was in town, so she got all the best writers. <laughs> hey, Amber, I love you. So they, can- <laughs> gotta, so gotta they canceled me, but that's okay, B, because I'm ready for this new album. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, I, my mom was like, God God knew what he was doing when he didn't have them. Go, go in there and write that song. And I went in, and wow, I, like... Wow cried in the car like had a little bit of a look anxiety attack <laughs> right. in the car and was like i'm about to go in here i'm about to beast this song i'm a great writer like my self-talk has had to change because yes. Yes. i was holding myself back from everything that i know god wants for me Ooh. i like literally She's dropping bars. Don't you just a run a wall. you're my favorite interview so far we've been I doing this show for I a year do. and a half this is great this is fantastic you guys I love are the things she's it's all say. you know it's all it's all it's all been god like it literally aligning myself with what god wants for me and my purpose and not putting so much pressure on myself mm. and putting trust in that like my prayer life has been different i get up and i worship god i read my word and i pray for 30 minutes to an hour every day that's the first thing that i do when i get up in the morning and you know and i still still believe in in it still believing in my full complete healing and yeah. full complete deliverance from god but doing the work yeah you know, was it like because i just started the therapy work. i'm just curious because mm-hmm. you went through a tough time do you feel like that work felt as hard as like like a heavy rep of like some heavy Hardest weight? thing that I've ever done in my mm. life. Really? Because I'm I am a I'm a fixer. Mm-hmm. I'm not the one that needs to be fixed. I'm a I'm and I'm a reader. I read things and I figure things out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like so, having to sit and feel stupid or feel like I should have. I should know this. Yeah. This is simple math. I should know this. You know, I've been a Christian my whole life. What is, why am I talking to myself like this? Like all of that, like the religious issues that I have and the image issues that I have and the identity issues that I have, they all were just fighting one another. And I had to just see this why I don't be want to go. Russ, you got it. Go. You got it. You, I'll be going, and man. You have to be involved be... in the mm-hmm. process, and you say the craziest things that you need to say that are in your mind that you are afraid to say out loud. I w- mm-hmm. I was in there doing that, and I was mm-hmm. like, "This is dumb." But I, <laughs> I did it though. But you did it. And it I did it though, easier. and I told her it was dumb. She was like, "It's okay. It's gonna feel dumb yeah. at the beginning." Like, but you know, this is some blah blah blah. But I I I, I feel like I've been doing this a lot this mm-hmm. interview. But I, it is true. I'm the same way. Like, bro, I can't be in here. It's hard. <laughs> Tony Soprano, bro. What am I finna yeah. do up in right. here? Like, if I'm in here, what they gonna think? What, mm-hmm. Like, who's they? Right. Who's, it's, it's just me and her. And nobody knows who we're talking about. Like, who is, who is they? the they? Who, is that they? who are the they? I don't we, know. We all be afraid. We've been like asking DJ gonna... Cali. <laughs> who is they? <laughs> I always feel like somebody's gonna bust at me like, ha, ha. You were here the whole time. Like, what? <laughs> Are you in middle school? You get yeah. therapy, aren't you? I've been pretty open about that. Nerd. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> but you have to surrender to the process and That's you have fact. to like, I remember my, cause my, my therapist is, he's a jerk and I mm. love it. <laughs> um, I have a, my therapist is a middle-aged white man. Really? Mm. Yes. And I've, I've went through so many therapists and like, he is the one that I connected to because I almost, and this is going to sound very, a little bit conceited, but I almost felt like I just kept impressing a lot of these therapists because mm. I because I speak really eloquently. Like yeah. I can I can talk about things, but I could I couldn't I couldn't book him. He saw that. He saw <laughs> through. <laughs> I, couldn't, uh, 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 I couldn't book him. Uh, and the other day yeah. he told me he was like, "You sitting here waiting for the other shoe to drop? It has dropped. You're here. Like Dang. you walking around with no shoes on." So wow. what are we gonna do? And I was like, "Oh, I like you." <laughs> let me let me let me ask you this because you said you said something that re- really resonated with me a few minutes ago. You were talking about like the self talk mm-hmm. thing because like I've realized now that self talk is the most important talk that we're ever gonna have because yeah. we believe in things that we tell ourselves yeah. more than anything. How do you talk to yourself differently now as opposed to say maybe 
a year ago? Like, do you say different things to yourself? Like, how do you? So, so basically, like I was saying before, I'm I'm going through what they call cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm -hmm because I do deal with anxiety and with anxiety. See, people think that anxiety is just nervousness. Mm -hmm. and That's not, there's different types, social anxiety. Like there's just different types. Yeah. But one type is um, your brain filters information in a negative way. Mm -hmm. So you have to, so you have to figure out, okay, based on, on the thought that I have right now is making me anxious. What type of distorted thinking am I doing? Am I mind reading? Am I telling the future? Am I catastrophizing right now? Like, mm, I have wow. to feel, am I overgeneralizing everything? You know, am I letting go of the positive? Like, I literally think of, I literally take every single thought and challenge it. Mm. And if it is true, I can reconceptualize it if it's negative. And if it is false, I can challenge it and tell it that it's a lie. And that's when Jesus. That's comes how in. I am too. That's yeah. uh, it's and it's it's crazy because those are automatic. They're called automatic negative thoughts. Yep. They it just you don't even think about how you process it. That's just the way that you internalize yeah. it. You and if you've been it doing it, mm -hmm. and and if you've been doing it your whole life, we have what uh, sixty thousand to eighty thousand thoughts a day. Mm. Most of those thoughts that are going around in our minds are the same thoughts ruminating so it's on over in your subconscious, but in your subconscious loop. though. <sighs> so I had to go into my subconscious and be like, this is what I thought. The first time that I performed after dealing with all that I dealt with, I, in my subconscious, because this is what goes on, like right ruminating in my mind, I was thinking all kinds of stuff. And because now I'm going through cognitive behavioral therapy, I was able to stop myself and challenge all those thoughts. No, these people paid to see me sing, so obviously they want to hear me sing. No, I look, I look good. That is and, dope. And that's left. crazy because now you're taking <laughs> so the work dope. outside of the therapy room mm -hmm. and into the real world where you have to like deal with that stuff head on. And there's so much power in that ability to challenge those thoughts yes. too. Once you unlock that, I mean, it's not easy to. No, no, no. It's you got to have to sometimes. identify those thoughts and try to figure out where those are coming yep. from. You know, it's funny as a performer, I do this. Me and Doe talk about this all the time. I, I, and I just did it in every show this weekend. I will have 99.8% of the audience rolling and my mind will push all of them aside and find the one person not laughing. And being like, what am I, why is this, what is this, why am I not funny? Am I not funny to this person? Do I think I'm a social media comedian? <laughs> like, this one dude, I could not get him in uh, Virginia Beach. I mean, I, right in the front. I uh, could not get him. Then he was in the meet and greet line. I was like, oh, you want to come and get a picture? <laughs> and he was like, I, I just didn't grow up in the church, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and I was like, all my jokes wasn't about the church. <laughs> why aren't you laughing? <laughs> why did you go to my basketball game in eighth grade? <laughs> yeah, you weren't part of my basketball game. <laughs> to hell with him. <laughs> like, and I really got to I, I gotta get out of my mind. But yeah. me, me and Tony and Doe, we always talk about this. Yeah. We all do that mm -hmm. because we are the class clown. Yeah. And if I'm not getting the whole class, who doesn't think I'm funny? Yeah. And why? why don't people think I'm funny? I'm funny, right? <laughs> so when I first started this tour, whew. That's a human thing, though. That's it a very is. human thing. And it's a thing that you can work on. Like, yeah, I me, literally turned away this last show. I was like, man, forget you. You, <laughs> you don't understand comedy. That's you just what, don't what. get it. Yeah. <laughs> so I literally, nerd, because like, I scan and I just was like, this person's not laughing. No, don't scan that far anymore. Yeah, uh -huh. just stay here. Just go Where right here yeah. and go back to the because audience. Because it'd be a room full of, he'd be getting standing those, it'd be a room full of people that are just enjoying themselves. But I get it. It's just something that automatically. It's the same way you find the negative comments exactly. in social yeah. media. Like, it's a thousand positive. What did this guy say? And I also feel like it's we we, we don't want to believe. It's like somebody said something that that was so dope to me. They were they said, "You're not you're never as bad as they say you are, but you're also never as good." Mm. And I and I feel like there's a Ooh. there's a there's a there's a balance to believing. You to, dropping bars. To believing. Never, I see that I'm going to be lit. There's a <laughs> <this> bars <laughs> conversation. I'm going to be watching I'm this cry. several I times. I can't though. imagine what's on the album. I got to rewatch this. <laughs> there, there's a balance to like. I feel like we look for the negative because we don't want to believe the, in our greatness. Do you know what Welcome, I'm saying? Welcome, like, guys. There's been another installment of <laughs> Righteous and Ratchet. <laughs> Yes, I'm here. Yes, we about? heard it. We heard what she said. <laughs> That's in a nutshell where it is. You see it, Josh. Oh, Don't you run from I'm it. I'm living Matt. in it. I don't know. What do you mean? Ooh. I see it. I, I'm, we're oh, sitting in this right now. Snap. Get comfortable. That simple. That yeah. is so good. 
That is so simple. That's, Melissa Fredericks. Whew. That's for you too. That was a bar. <laughs> whew. She got to talk to Liz. Man. Got to talk to Liz. My wife is so amazing. I love but she has not wife. fully accepted her amazingness. Oh, man. She, I told her she is Captain Marvel. Have you seen Captain Marvel? Uh-huh. She's Captain Marvel, and she's keeping those things on. And she thinks they're harnessing her powers, and they are holding her back. She has something though, like that uh, that draws people. She oh, yeah. got something oh, yeah. that draws. I'm telling you, when her. my career wanes, it's gonna be partly because she's gonna be in her so out of here. Mm-hmm. All I ask is that on her rider. Put me in. <laughs> Just include me get two first class tickets. Just That's it. include I me. We'll take care of You'll you. You'll take I'll comfort. Have a hot tea, bro. I don't have to carry it no more. Please, <laughs> I'll be sitting there. Mm, mm-hmm. I'll be a first husband. They introduce I'm her. in the Bentley. I'll be somebody got a ride on the other Chilling side. Chilling in the Bentley. I got no problem. Don't worry. Take you your time. You know Michelle Obama is like <laughs> Michelle Obama's killing it now. Right. Coming a Barack like bro. I don't even put his eyes on no oh, more. Golf, He's in that blue tree. Tree. Bro, no, I ain't seen Barack in a tie in like three years. Not at all. <laughs> That's going to be me. No, go ahead, babe. Go I'm going to be at the Crafty. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they got fresh Peruvian so over here. Y'all know that's something that they discussed, though. Oh, you yes. know it. He's like, Absolutely. after the second time, she's like, oh, I got to get back to my stuff. That is me. Okay, Amber, we, we ain't going to hold you. I got a couple more questions, and I'm going to okay. let you go. Zay? He's, he's in the room. He's here? All yeah, right. I think I think so. Um, I'm surprised my sister not snoring. <laughs> we yelling and stuff. She ain't even. No, she's like when she goes to sleep. It's... Yeah, they still here. Okay, cool. Okay, here's a good question. I'll ask this one while you find that one. All right, cool. Okay, how do you recharge, practice self care when you when you begin feeling burnt out or emotionally exhausted? Um, I meditate. I've been hearing a you lot more about too. that. Mm-hmm. I could never get into meditating. This is going to sound like a dumb question, but I, I'm going to ask it anyway. Okay. What is the difference between when you're praying and when you're meditating? There really isn't. It's really like the same? It's the almost the same, same thing. Okay. It's about meditation. Well, the, let me let me take that back. Okay. Mindfulness is just mindfulness. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, meditation is just a tool of mindfulness. Prayer okay. is a tool of, of mindfulness. It's about being present and being, the, being in the moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, taking control and quieting down your brain, slowing down your brain. So meditation is really. Is it hard to get into that? Because I, I, do you ever try to meditate? I try, but I my brain just need... be doing too much. How long are you trying to do it for? I get like five, six minutes in. That's I'll be fine. Like, I can't. That's fine. I was falling asleep. You don't. You don't have to. <laughs> and that's fine too. I was like, yes, Kevin. This is this thing. What is this? What do you do, like? Do, like, do you normally like? Do, like, do, are you silent? Dong dong dong. No, no, no. I mean, there's all there's all different types. There's of, apps of, too of that medic- help Yeah, you. and I use the I use the I'm not gonna say which app because they ain't paying. Yeah, me. no, no. Me and Melissa did it. Though. I do use an app. There's so many out there it that you talks can you use, it. and it and I do guided meditation. Sometimes I don't do guided meditation. Yeah. Sometimes I just put the sound on and I just sit and I just I'm present. Yeah. Mm. And it and it recharges me. It recharges my brain because I go. You know, you go through a lot in a day. I have Absolutely. to listen things that I got to get done in the real world, and and especially getting like my, my EP and stuff together. There's so much that needs to be done. Mm-hmm. And when you're independent, if you don't move the yep. needle, it, it don't get done. It listen. don't get done. You so <laughs> listen, ain't nobody our Do you right. do you do your meditation like a, at a particular time in the day, or do you just do it whenever you find the time? Um, I try to do it in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, Start your day off right. I try to do you know. Uh, I do it before, you know, I did it before I came here. I do it before a performance. I do it before anything just to, like, recharge and reset my brain. Yeah. Nice. So meditation is a really, and five minutes is fine. Five minutes is good. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, that. in the pool, I was swimming mm-hmm. a lot. It's great for, for calming yourself because you mm-hmm. can't do nothing else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No music. You can't check your phone. Just it's you just in you the way. You can I do just, it in a bath, bathtub. Yeah, he can get in the tub. I've now. been getting in baths lately, and it's the man. I know it's that water best. be spilling. Over. No, it don't. The yeah. Water don't be spilling. You be in there looking like I a used to be pig. so big I couldn't take a bath, and I just took one for the first time like two Saturdays ago, and now I've been taking nothing but baths. Yeah. Be still just a, be in there. Huh? I'll be still in Kiara's bubble bath, like <laughs> wiggling I'll your be, little toesies. Bruh, burn a little candle. <laughs> 
Oh, it's oh, everything. Yeah, that's a perfect time oh, to meditate. Maybe that is my form of meditation. Yeah, and water is water is is calming and healing. I love the water. Yeah. All right, Amber, we're gonna let you go. You've been amazing. You've been Thank no, you. she's been more than amazing. This Thank is so you. great. Thank you for the things the, you said. The EP comes out what day? <coughs> I can't say yet. <laughs> this year, soon. Though. It's definitely. We just coming want to out. tell people about it. It's definitely coming out soon. Um, I guess I can say that it'll be out in April. Okay. Hopefully, my manager we, won't be. Do we mad. push you? We didn't push you to that. I hope. I hope my manager doesn't be mad. But <laughs> look for it in April. Gotcha. That's April. The, what's? Can you say the, the name of it? No. Okay. Look for Amber O'Reilly's untitled EP, <laughs> but we'll have a title mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> at that time. In Follow April. Follow her. Miss Amber P. Riley. Oh, somebody asked are you related to Teddy Riley. I didn't think you were, are you? I don't know. <laughs> That's fair. That's no, a fair that's response. Me Nia, honest answer. Because me and Nia be talking about it because I'm friends. Like, you know, I know them. So we'll be like, where, you know, we where be is your family from? Never, no. We might be related. Both very musical. Yeah, because there's Riley's and there's a lot of Riley's in Virginia, North Carolina, and Texas. Mm. So And Teddy was from Virginia, wasn't he? I think so. So oh, yeah. I think that we're I think that we may be related. Nice. That's crazy. I'm related right. to Cheryl Pepsi Riley. Who? Cheryl Pepsi Riley. You related to her? Mm-hmm. You know Cheryl Pepsi. Yes, I know. You know I'm, Pepsi for sure. Diet <laughs> Pepsi. Pepsi. Cherry Pepsi. And Astra. <laughs> Cherry <laughs> Vanilla Pepsi. Yeah. Then he, I mean, you know Pepsi. You're, a diet You're Coke guy. horrible. <laughs> I hate the man. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. I've enjoyed this episode this has been great. immensely yes. on a personal level. I will oh, be yeah. watching and rewatching. Shout out to the Right Pack and the stage crew for allowing you guys to see this. Yes. Uh, shout out to Miss Amber P. Riley. Check her out. Follow her on social medias. Don't comment ridiculous stuff. Mm-hmm. And we'll see y'all next week. Peace. Peace. Social Peace. medias. <laughs>